there are a lot of reproductive endocrine centers in the United States, but I wanted to talk about a few of the things that I think makes us unique. So I, I set up a study that we published in Fertility and Sterility in 2007 to ask the question, and I wanted to find out what is the difference between a four cell, five cell, six cell, seven cell, and eight cell embryo in its ability to implant. But what woman puts in, first, how many women do single embryo transfers, even though there's a push to do that to prevent multiple births, but even if they do a single embryo transfer, the faster that an embryo divides, what we call cleave, the more hardy the embryo is. That's logical. So if a woman didn't create a lot of eggs but had a few, and she had a four-cell embryo, it only grew to four cells by day three, or she had an eight-cell and a six-cell, and they were the only three she had, and she's going to do one embryo, which one would she take? You're not going to do eeny, meeny, miny, mo and, and take the four cell. You'll take the eight cell. So I wanted to do a study where women had no choice because all they had was one embryo. So I took a woman with very diminished egg reserve. Everybody, the, the five groups I'm going to tell you about all had FSH levels way over that magic number of 15. And if I, 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 if I tell you we've had pregnancies with women whose FSH has been as high as 185, um, and in menopause, we have tricks to reverse menopause even and get pregnancies. So I know those facts when they talk about high FSH are wrong. Um, but nevertheless, in this study, when we put a, a single four-cell embryo back, we had a 3.8% pregnancy rate. When it was five cells, 9.5%. When it was six cells, 38%. When it was seven cells, 40%. When it was eight cells, 42.4%. So. These would be the, the cases that in people doing studies showing that high dose, uh, that, that high FSH is bad, they wouldn't have even had a transfer because they always canceled the cycle. How many times have you gone through, you, you've taken your medications, you've been injected, you went through all the bloods and ultrasounds, and then the doctor says, I'm canceling the cycle because you don't have enough eggs. And some of you have insurance and you scratch your eggs and I don't understand it. Why are you canceling the cycle? You know, what's wrong with, is there something risky with the retrieval? Are we saving me a major operation? That's a very simple procedure. What is the big deal about proceeding with the, with the cycle? It's because the doctor wants to try to push up their pregnancy rates and they're afraid you're going to lower their rates. That's what it is. Uh, but we don't care about that. We care about you, not about our statistics. But the fact is that our statistics aren't that bad, despite the bad cases we take, because these women don't do that bad. 65% um, of the women, thank God, do get to a 6, 7, or 8 cell embryo in that case, and they're the ones that the 38 to 42% pregnancy rate didn't really lower our numbers that much. So that's why. But we learned that how fast it cleaves is good. But how many times I tell you, oh, you have a very fragmented embryo, I'm not even going to transfer it? Well, guess what we found in this study? We found that we had a 35% pregnancy rate, irrespective of how many cells were in the embryo, if they had, were what we call grade A embryos, really no, almost no fragmentation or less than 10%. When there was mild fragmentation, 25%, so lower but not that bad. But when they were really bad, they still had 25% success. So sometimes women said, oh, I, I didn't have any embryos to transfer because the ones I had were so bad. What would have been the big deal to take a little catheter, put it in your uterus, and push those embryos in even though they're fragmented? Any problem for you? No. It's just the, 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 if you're under the New Jersey mandate, for example, and you get four IVF cycles, will they not count that as long as you don't have a transfer? No. The fact you went through stimulation and retrieval, that counts. So what's the downside of putting those embryos in? The only downside is that the, you, you'll help the doctor's statistics not lower if, in fact, you'll drop their statistics, and it doesn't do that. So we, we care about you. We don't care about the statistics. We care about saving you money. And we get you involved in, in deciding what's right for you. We let you know what, what realistic expectation you might find by a less aggressive type of therapy that seemingly corrects problems. We've done all that.